Hey guys, it's Roshan Curie here and you're very, very welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to head up the road near my home in County Galway and I'm going to try and sketch some haystacks, but I hope they'll still be there. The farmers don't hang around when it's a beautiful day. This is the first glimpse of Tyrone House as you come to the top of the hill. And you'll, you'll see in a minute why I really want to sketch here today, apart from the fact that it's absolutely divine outside. Not too warm, no wind, just a sunny afternoon. There's a huge tractor on the way, so if I want to stay alive, I am going to pull in here to the side of the road. Oh my God. Oh, sh you know what? I think I might be a little bit too late. That tractor has got all the bales of hay on it and I might be just not in time. Hmm, better hurry. Okay, well, I'm still in time, but I'll have to use all my powers of speedy sketching to get these, these hay bales done. But I guess that tractor has to unload them somewhere, doesn't he? And come back with an empty trailer, so I better get cracking. Well, here's the ruins of Tyrone House, but I'm going to make sure I'm a little distant from it so that I can get all the hay bales in as well. Wow, so gorgeous. Here's my POV, but I'm going to change the distance between the house and the hay bales or I do you know what I'm going to move the hay bales in obviously not physically I need a few farm hands to do that with me well a few tractors so uh, I'm going to move them in my composition lie if you will to make them closer to the house and that way I might fit everything in okay let's get set up here are all the materials I used and you'll find more details in most of my other videos. I like the house in the sun and it has to be done in its entirety. So I'm going to put that on this side. wrong. It's way too big. Way too big. I'd love to know what those birds are. I think they're swallows. It's going to be a lot more blurred because of the wet that I just put on it. Okay, something like that. This is really just to get the overall scale so you don't have to put any detail in at this stage. Okay, something like that. Right, that's going to go over there. Sorry, whispering. And then this is going to be the chimney. All right, now I'll let that dry. And then I've got a beautiful slope here. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the first hay bale in here. And then we've got some big ones here. So this is as I say literally just placing just placing the the composition all together. Anything that might change, draw it first. Those hay bales might change. So I'm going to draw them.
like giant spools of cotton. Now, for the next little bit, I've had to jump from haystack to haystack because my hand was covering them up as I was drawing them. So now is the time to just kind of like add a few more haystacks to your drawing. Just make sure you get the positioning right. They're not that hard, really. They're just like elliptical ends and then horizontal lines at the top and the bottom and just dot them all over the fields. But do try to get the sizes and positions right. So the next thing I did was to colour in the ends of the haystacks away from the sun because they were so, so dark in deep, deep shadow. So I used my brown document ink by Detrimentus to get those really, really shaded ends of some of the haystacks, not quite all of them. Okay, so we've got something like... just thinking far away on the far field they're just little do you know what they're blue Now I'm going to paint in all these hay bales first because the light might change. First I'm going to put in some texture of the grass. Even though my green ink is almost finished, I think it's important to get the, the direction of your very exuberant child over there. Oh, I've missed out a few. Wait, now what's going on here? Oh yeah. So the most important thing at this stage is to get the feeling of light and sunshine because that's the whole that's the whole thing about this this scene this beautiful sweep what's going on there this beautiful sweep of of the fields as it climbs the hill and then goes down again. That's what I love about this field. And you wouldn't believe it today when it looks like the south of France. But sometimes it's so cold and so windy that even with a hat, a woolly hat pulled down firmly over my ears, I can't hear my 
my music or my podcast or whatever I'm listening to. Okay, so what I have to do is get the brilliance of the light on the far side. Okay, I think it's time to put the background in. Right, I've got some colour mixed here. Now it does look a bit dark. Whoops, it does look a bit dark. It's yellow ochre, sap green and a little bit of yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on blotchily if you will I've speeded up the next little bit because it's not that complicated the only thing that you should know is that well I've varied the colour mix a little bit so while most of it is similar to the colours I mentioned before the sap green, the yellow ochre and the Aquarius yellow it's in different proportions to get that slightly uneven look. I've used my OR13 from Rosemary & Co, which is a lovely point and it's great for going around all those little hay bales. Also, the other thing that you really need to take note of here is that you should darken up a tiny bit around each of the hay bales just to make them really pop. If I want the sun to shine on the top of those hay bales, I've got to deepen up the area just above the sunlight. And here I'm making all those slightly deepened areas around the hay bales. I'm making them blend into the surrounding fields, which is a little bit easier if you do it when the paint is still a bit wet. So put one in here to experiment to see if it's going to work. Oh, look at that, it went too close. I'm using my OR13 brush because it's got a nice point. Yeah, I think this is going to work fine. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's a sequence that you have to do these things. Better rub that in so that it doesn't bleed too much. So the sun is very strong today and it's drying my paint quickly, which 
which is definitely a good thing. I prefer it that way. Because I like to work in layers, but I have to work fast. little butterflies in front of me. So I'm adding little bits of texture to enhance and enliven the field and also to emphasize the direction of the hill going upwards. It's so important to darken up the top sides of all those little haystacks because that is what makes the difference. It's what makes the highlights pop and shine, but it's also what makes the hill look like a hill. A little touch of concentrated yellow ochre around the edges of the ellipses is a good way to show the prickly bits of the edge of the hay sticking out of the bales. Whereas these little yellow ochre ellipses are the ends of the hay bales, but in some sunshine, not full sunshine, but some sunshine. They're not as dark as the inked in bits. Um, I'm not sure my values are quite deep enough to get the feeling of light. So the hedge in the distance is basically just a really dark shade of Aquarius green with maybe a little bit of sap green mixed in, giving it a bit of definition because it really is in the shade out of the sunlight so it's quite dark. Really peaceful out here today. I'm so glad I'm sharing it with you in a manner of speaking. Okay, now it's time for me to put in a blue sky, I think. Now I need a really clean brush for this. 
So I'm going to use my limited edition squirrel. Okay, it's not wet enough. Okay, that should do the trick. Okay, that should dry pretty quickly. And then the next thing after that is to wait for that to dry. And meanwhile, I can fiddle with the foreground a little bit. It shouldn't take long for that to dry. Just above the brow of the hill, I've added some yellow ochre. And the idea is that it would look a little bit darker just to the north, we'll say, of the hill. And it makes it look like there's a, there's a break in the topography. So now the field and the haystacks are fully done and I'm going to concentrate on trying to draw the ruin. And I'm using the reverse of my foodie pen nib so I get a nice skinny line. I feel safer. My line's not going to be huge and clumsy. So I'm going to carefully put it in the house now. And I want to make sure I get the whole thing. And I have to have it finished by here, roughly. Okay, see if I can do that. As I draw each element, I cast my eyes downwards over the face of the building just to make sure that I'm on the right track, that the chimneys are lining up with the cracked windows and so on. OK, time for some fancy, fancy line work. This is a really good way if you're not too confident about pushing in your windows. So I've got... like this and then I've got this and this you can just put in the rough position if they're going to be black anyway So 
So as you can see, I've got the rough position. This one's got some white, so I have to be careful. Okay. That should do it. So I've got all the windows roughly marked in position. Now I just have to draw them on top of the rough markings. See all these windows, I'm going to make these jet black in a minute. So again, it's about values. If I put in these dark squares that are the windows, and then if I put the, the dark, dark house on top of it, then we should get the gloomy effect of the house itself. And that's what we want, it's gloomy. Okay, let's do those in black now. Actually, it's dark grey. If I do the house really, really dark, then, then the light coming through the windows will really shine up and that's what you want. Now I must let that ink dry a good bit. It's going to be super dark down here. Okay, first I'm going to use, hopefully there's some ink left in my pen, to draw the ivy.
Remember, it can always go darker if necessary, but you can't go lighter. Now it's going to get lighter as it goes down the house and away from the edges because your eyes are more accustomed to the gloom once you get to the interior. little trees they're just blobs that my glasses better put them on Here are two tips for drawing trees, curly edges and darker undersides. And if you think of the two words, scribbles and lace, scribbles for the outside bits of the tree and for the dark bits at the bottom and lace because there's always a bit of light filtering through the leaves on the upper sides of the canopies.
Well, I'm nearly at the end now, but I'm just taking the time to fill in a little bit of a darker bit between the highlight and the rest of the shadow on the sides of the hay bales. Because if you fill in a little bit darker on the kind of high point of the curves, I don't know, it just looks really, really realistic. One final layer of darker paint on the surface of Tyrone House, just because it'll help it to really stand out against the blue sky. Here I am, all finished. I should really have my back to the scene I've just been doing, but this is what it looks like. And I suppose what I wanted more than anything was to capture the, the feeling of light and sunshine. Anyway, I've had a fantastic afternoon sitting here in the sun. I wouldn't be anywhere else. And uh, I've learned a little bit about, well, haystacks actually. What have I learned about haystacks today? That I like them? That's about all I've learned. Anyway, I'll pack up and I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed this visit to the fields of hay with me this afternoon. If you want to know what materials I've used, they're in many of the other videos that I have here on my channel. So see you next time and as always, happy sketching. <laughs>